Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this? You may ask, so I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm, establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I do like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Sue Pinckney. But before that, I'd, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future, and transform your present to raise your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, and take charge of your destiny so you can spread your wings and soar. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, uh, future life progression, past life regression, guide meditation, and angel oracle cards to assist you in remembering why you are here, your spiritual path, and clarity on the next steps to take. I also offer a multidimensional virtual retreat, several transformational packages, a journey through lifetimes, a six-week guide meditation series to help you gain confidence, and various workshops. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or an angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Sue Pinckney, about why keeping things simple just makes our life so much easier. Now, Sue was a young entrepreneur who also suffered from depression since she was a teenager and had a fear of death. But after going through some ups and downs in her life, including a traumatic event, she discovered Reiki. Now, childhood memories played a part in her healing as she remembered what lit her up and what she was interested in, and which were early indications of what work she could do to be of service to others and walk the path that she was born to walk. Now, along the way, Sue has connected with Spirit, Galactic Friends and St. Germain, created guided meditations and has not only healed herself, but has also helped heal others. Now, being a single parent and doing more than one job, which so many people unfortunately have to do, Sue's life was too busy that she didn't have the confidence to speak her truth. But from the work she has done, Sue realised that she needed to keep things simple. Her motto now is have less, do less and be more. So without further delay, hello, Sue, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hello. Thank you very much. That sounds very impressive. I've, that's really impressed me now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very good, thank you. I'm very nervous, as you know, but <laughs> that's part of me. <laughs> You'll be absolutely fine. Thank you for taking the step to actually come and put yourself in front of a camera. You know, that's a very brave thing to do. So good on you for doing that. Thank you very much. So this, be... this year, it's certainly been a year to uh, to um, step out of my comfort zone even more. I think I've, I've got so used to being in a, a same sort of comfort zone. And, and at 59 now, I'm sort of like stepping a bit further. <laughs> and as you should be, <laughs> and, and as everyone else the room should be doing as well. Yeah. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can ask, also ask questions, leave thoughts and comments, as both Sue and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Sue, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how by keeping things simple makes our lives so much easier? Right. Well, I think I think a lot of since we had lockdown, it gave me a lot of time to reflect and look back on my life. And that's when I realised that was even more synchronicities than I even imagined. Um, I, I've always believed there's no such thing as coincidence. Um, but I think since lockdown, having having not to worry about my business, not being able to go into work, not trying to make money all the time, like I had to just sit back and reevaluate life and enjoy life a little bit as well <laughs> so I started sort of doing a lot of soul searching which I think a lot of us have we sort of did do in lockdown as well yeah and um I just started to um write write things more down about myself and my life and and in the last probably about five years ago I had a real strange experience where I feel that I connected with our galactic friends in fact it was so strange I ended up in hospital because I thought I'd had a stroke wow. <laughs> and um from a young age at the at school I, I I really didn't like school I didn't like school I didn't get on school the only part of school that I liked was when it was coming to the Christmas holidays or coming to the summer holidays where we played games all day <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, they 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 were the they were the fun days. I I yeah. like drama, drama. Yeah, and playing. Yeah, yeah. I did. I liked I liked art and I liked cross country, but I didn't like any of the theory. And in fact, I've openly admitted this year that when it came to my exams, I literally wrote my name in history and geography. And I've I also again this is this is something that's highlighted this year that I now I'm aware of what's gone in on in the world. I believe that somebody up there, again, was guiding me to say, don't get too involved with all this because it's it's not necessarily what we're being taught and it's not necessarily true. And this is what I think this this year, is, is, it's been such an eye-opener. Um, so I say, when I was younger, I, one of the things I remembered at school was watching a programme, an outfit, a little alien boy called Peep Peep. And over the years, so many people that I've asked have never ever heard of Pete Pete. So I even like, <laughs> I even went on YouTube because YouTube has everything now. Um, and there he is, this little alien boy called Pete Pete. How, how it ever came up to watch it at school, I do not know, but I do know that I did watch it at school. Um, and in probably this year, a lady that comes to my meditation group is probably the only other lady that's ever heard of Pete Pete. <laughs> Okay. So but, that but, but it, may, it may be that if I Google it, I may look and go, oh, yeah, I kind of like vaguely do remember that. Yeah, he's like a little white haired boy and there was some children that met him and everything else. So, of course, there was that. There was that. And then um, from about the age of 10, I I'm, and I'm not a film person particularly anyway now, um, but I actually watched a film called The Amazing Mr. Blunden on my 10th birthday. I love that film. Yeah. That is such yeah. an amazing film. I, I cry every time. <laughs> I still love it. I still love it. And it just so grasped me and, and inspired me and the thing with the spirit and the children. And and so, of course, there was there was that. But not that I still realised that that's, there was anything particularly with that film, but I always remembered it. And then um, then there was an, also another film called Soul Survivor, which I'm sure it was actually a black and white film. Um, and it was about the American, I'm, I'm sure it's about American air, uh, air base and there was an accident and there was a plane crash and I won't give too much away, but there was a very strange twist at the end. And again, it was all about that they, it was ghosts, it was spirit. So in, the, in, in lockdown, like I say, I've been like looking back at thinking, so that, that, that sort of like inspired me then. And, and, and of course, as I got older, a bit older as well, I... I feared death, really used to lay in bed at night, sort of like being absolutely quite traumatised about losing everybody. And and then recently, of course, I've, I felt that I've connected more with our galactic friends even more. And, and it was only probably about six weeks ago as well, I actually met four ladies and I was telling them this story about a lady that said that her sister-in-law that connects with, with our, our galactic friends, um, felt that she was taken away by them. And um, she ended up having this strange like mark on her body afterwards when she came back. And then of course I've often, I've often heard other people saying that when they were about sort of 10, sort of from the age of five to 10, that they were sort of taken away and come back. And I'm sort of thinking, oh, well, I don't remember that. I didn't sort of, <laughs> I wasn't in a coma or I wasn't really ill for like week. But all of a sudden again in lockdown, it, it sort of came to me but when I was younger and I hated having to go to bed, for some apparent reason on a Sunday afternoon, the whole of the village where I lived was out looking for me because I disappeared. Ah. And my brother found me laying upstairs. I was in my bed um, fast asleep on a Sunday. And I've always had, again, this mark on my arm. And I've always put it down to being a birthmark. And when I met these ladies about sort of four or five weeks ago, I was telling them this story. And this is no word of a lie. It was so it was so funny. We all like had a connection, and next minute we're all putting our elbows in because we all had this mark on our elbows. Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> so, um, so of course, all these little things are sort of like building up, and then and I became a teenager. Um, I think my granddad died, my sort of pop, and that was probably my first time I'd ever experienced death, apart from animals and things. And um, I'll say I was quite sort of traumatised. I can remember just being told. But then I also remember coming back to the wake 
and everybody like laughing and joking and I'm sort of thinking this didn't seem sort of quite like right so and then as I got older I became very depressed and I think at school I wasn't able to be myself I don't think when this is my personal opinion I'm not don't want to upset any people out there that are teachers but I don't feel that they encouraged us if we were practical and not theory and 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 I was definitely a theory and I still am as you as why we happen to record this today because technology is just not it just doesn't go with me <laughs> <laughs> I have better communication with spirit than I can work with with with, with modern day technology <laughs> So anyway, I became depressed, sort of quite depressed, and I was very creative, even with my sewing. But again, at school, it's like they used to tell you have you had to measure a like a, a tack on your clothing. It's like I don't do that. I just put my clothes, my material under the under the under the needle, and it'll just stitch and make something up. It's like why does everything have to be so complicated? Yes. You even have to measure a tack for your clothing. It's like. And, and none of this felt right. And I just felt that the world felt quite invasive. All the signs, all the choices of everything. It's like, why can't we have less choice of so many products to buy as well? And, and this I find still quite, quite an invasive thing. But also, you see, over the time, when I, I went to America many years ago, as soon as I saw the Amish people, I, I actually had tears rolling down my cheeks and there was some, and I, and I can still feel that emotion now. And it was just sort of like resonated me, to me, that simplicity and the fact that they don't like their photo being taken. I don't like my photo being taken. <laughs> um, and again, they have a simple life, even clothes. I just like, my, I don't particularly like dressing up. And people find that quite odd, that I just prefer to be quite plainly dressed. I feel I feel out of place if I'm all dressed up and with loads of makeup on. It just doesn't it doesn't feel me. So in that sense, I feel that I need to keep things a lot simpler. I need to simplify myself in my life because I have gathered too many things. But I think a lot of that was a little bit of a thing of um, needing and gathering just in case one day I hadn't got something. So I need to get myself over that um, side of things. Um, and anyway, I had this depression. Um, I, I got through this because I think eventually, well, then I had my daughter. I was a single mother and I had my daughter. So, of course, I had to get up every day. I had to get dressed. And then we got a dog, Noodle the Poodle. And, of course, I had to get out for walks and things. And um, and then one day someone turned up and she just said to me, I've just been on this amazing talk all about this healing. And it was it was about Reiki. And I just, again, I cried, I sobbed, I just, it just, I went goosebumps and I just, it just resonated and I just thought I've got to do that. And and fortunately, a few days before my parents had just gone on holiday, they gave me some money for something useful. <laughs> and um, that basically paid for my Reiki One teaching, which was at the time was about £350, I think, from what I remember. It was a lot of money all those years ago. Yeah. And um, so I got, I done that and I just knew, I just knew that was it. I, I felt, I felt at home and, it, and it's so strange because recently I've done a, a Reiki treatment on a, because I'm an Aries, on a, a young girl that's about 16 and I was telling her my story and she says, I can't wait for that day that I find something that I, I gel with because Aries, we do tend to flit around, flit around a little bit. We do tend to get a little bit bored with things and feel to move on, but Reiki now has been in my life, half of my life, I've realised now. It's like nearly 30 years I've been doing Reiki. And 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 I, and I like to say to people as well, um, as much as how much I embrace it, and I would never be without it, don't ever think that when you get into this sort of side of things that life is always going to be all fluffy bunny rabbits and hunkadory because I personally feel that we are being tested more more than ever because we don't want to keep coming back. We don't want to keep learning these lessons. And I think the earth plane is probably the hardest lesson that we've chosen to be here. Except, I mean, even now, I think we've all chosen to be here at this special time, which is, is an amazing time. It's such a time to embrace at the moment, but it's hard, but we've chosen this. I do believe we've all chosen this to be here at this time. 
And, and again, I don't particularly like using the word when people say people that are asleep because we've all come through different stages and different levels. And, and again, with Reiki, I don't like necessarily putting down as levels. And I like people to get out and learn their Reiki one and get out and start using it because I hear so many people that say they're not allowed to do their Reiki until they've done their Reiki two. And I just look back and I think, my biggest experiences were from when I done my Reiki one. Yeah. And how can you start teaching? Although you might not think you're going to teach. I never thought I'd teach. It's like, I still have that stigma of school and teaching. And like, Oh, I don't do teachers. It's like, I don't do teaching. And, and it wasn't until I had actually gone for some counseling. And the lady said to me, if you ever start teaching, I'd like you to teach me. It's like, really, <laughs> really? <laughs> and that's, that's really how that began. But like I say, with Reiki One, I had so many experiences and how they began. Um, spirit was trying to come in so much. And, and I had a little bit of a battle with myself at the time thinking, this isn't what Reiki is. Reiki is Reiki. Reiki is hands on healing. Keep it simple. And people, people like tarot cards and things don't necessarily want that side of it. They don't want spirit. They just want some relaxation. But spirit were coming in more and more and more. So in the end, I sort of like, I suppose that's when I realised about meditating or sitting still a little bit more. And although I didn't ever meditate by listening, I never listened to guided meditations. I feel my meditation is was just going out for walks in the woods with the dogs because I love nature and I love being outside or just looking in a fire in the flames or mm. listening to the water that was my form of meditation I didn't like I say I never really listened to guided meditations because again a lot of the voices I found was a little bit distracting yeah is is the voices <laughs> I always I always say to people you know if you're if you're googling or um uh, guide meditations going on YouTube listen to it first before you actually do it so you get an idea of the person's voice yeah. and whether whether you actually resonate with it or not exactly and I, and I think again that puts so many people off because they say they can't do it and, and there's no there's no right or wrong way like I say you can just sit next to a tree you can sit anywhere you can just stand on your in on, on a lawn you don't have to be doing anything just look at a candle you don't have to be and, and I just think it's so sad when people do get into all this, when they do think that they're, they're doing something wrong. But even with Reiki, I, I, I like to teach people and just to say, like, accept. And, and all what I'm giving is, is trying to give you some guidance and turn on your light switch. At the end of the day, there's no right or wrong, apart from as long as you're doing it honourably and you're doing it for good intentions. But you've got to be, you're, you're guided. I, I feel when I do the Eureka attunements that I'm only again the channel like I am a channel if I was doing readings. I feel that their guides are coming through doing their attunement and whichever way they're going to go is the way they'll be using their Reiki. And, and again, their life has been so different from mine for so many people. We've all had different experiences in life. And so they will attract the people that they can help. And I can't teach that. So... Again, it's all about just keeping the teaching and everything so simple for people to use their own self, their own intuition, their own love that they want to give out to, to working with all this sort of type of thing. Yeah. When um, you um, sort of like, you know, when you were doing the Reiki and the spirits came in, did you, did you know what was happening at the time? Had you got an understanding of that or was it just something out of the blue? You went, oh, my God, what's that? Well, I started seeing things or feeling things. And of course, a, a, a few years ago, my shop, the shop that I've got, my business, I started 25 years ago, it started getting a little bit quiet. And then this medium um, came to do a workshop and he said to me, you've been doing it for over 10 years. You need to start doing some charging because you're just giving everything away. Because I did used to be quite drained. I didn't realise that I was actually channeling. Um but one of my first biggest experiences um, of doing my Reiki treatment is this, this lady had, uh, had come along for a treatment. And I know her daughter had passed, didn't didn't know anything much more. But anyway, I was I was just sort of talking to her daughter and then all of a sudden this lady just opened her eyes and she looked at me and she just said, I've seen this white light. And I said, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Of course, then I'm talking to her daughter. 
didn't really know what I was doing. I was just sort of trying to talk to her, thinking, right, well, okay. So Were I you talking said, out loud or in your head? No, in my head. Yeah, just, yeah, in my head. And I just said, I said to this girl, can you just give me some evidence that I can give to your mum? And anyway, next minute I was getting them um, swings. And, and of course, I do tend to go goose pimples, as many people do. And I'm thinking swings, falling off. So I was getting falling off swings. And, I'm, and, and I wasn't really feeling that goose pimply feeling, which I know now, like, is, is a bit of confirmation for me. Um, and, and it's, but something still wasn't feeling right. And, and anyway, after the lady had sort of come around from a Reiki, we got sort of talking. And, and then it just blurted out my mouth. And this is what's happened so many times. I mean, I can talk. Believe me, I can talk, but it's like, and, and all of a sudden I said to this lady, I says, I got rings and it wasn't swings. It came out of rings and she showed me her little finger and there was a signet ring and her daughter had given it to her a couple of days before she passed because it was falling off her finger. Uh, it was rings falling off. off. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> and that's amazing. That, I know. And that was like, wow. And then I was just seeing so many different things like ladders at windows. And I said to this lady, I'm seeing a ladder at a window. And she went, yeah, my husband died while he was on a ladder cleaning the windows. And it's like, right, OK. But I think what happened and I and when I when I teach Reiki again now, I do say to people, don't just sort of go guns a blazing and start trying to give all this information, because, again, not everybody is still ready for that. They've They've come purely some relaxation they don't necessarily want to know about spirit so I feel that if spirit do want to come in try and get around the conversation sort of slightly about what's your views and things or if they come back again and then spirit come in again then you can start talking but not to sort of strike away like oh I've just seen this and I've just seen that because like I say just because we are used to it now it's like it's isn't this isn't this is natural as drinking a glass of water to us but it's still not to so many people. And there's so many people out there that are starting to get into all this type of thing. And, and I believe it's going to get, get more and more as more and, pe more and more people become aware. Um, but not to just straight, straight away sort of throw, throw it out. Even like chakras, so many people sort of talk about chakras as though if they're all shut down, you're going to be dead. And that can sound quite scary. <laughs> Some people do they, do they do though don't they it's like and then I have people phoning me up saying I've been told that my chakras are all shut down and like so it's like going to be something really bad and it's like people have just got to sort of keep things a little bit simpler I feel yeah, yeah to totally totally you're um simple so I just want to take you back a little bit so um when you started your business had you just had your daughter or um, yeah. You, did, did was was that a conscious decision because you had had your daughter, or was it just something that came into being? No, my daughter was about five. In fact, I just I even moved to a, to a school further away, and I always remember someone saying to me, "Oh, now you started your business. I bet you wish she was still just down the road." And it's like, no, because it, she wasn't getting on there. Um, and my mum had just sort of semi sort of retired, but she wasn't really ready to retire. She worked at Age Concern. And so, again, one of these not sort of synchronicities, I actually went to go and buy a Hoover. And the shop along the road used to do it so you can pay in instalments in those yeah. days. <laughs> Good old shops like that. <laughs> yeah, you used to love those. <laughs> those do, yeah. So, anyway, I sort of got talking and I sort of, by then I was, I, I started Reiki. I was doing Reiki and I've been doing it at home. And of course, it was a bit disruptive at home, really, because my daughter sort of always had to be sort of like really quiet and everything. So, but she was she was as good as gold. I used to give her a ginger nut, and she was quiet. Ginger nut. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, she became a professional dunker. Um, but anyway, I went into this shop one day, and I just said, "Oh, like one day, I'd, I'd like to have a shop in Burton Latimer." And they says, "Well, we've got one coming up soon for rent." So it's like, right, phone my mum up because I say my mum really didn't want to retire. And um, so that was it. We went and looked at this premises and that was it. It went from there. So we started selling crystals and the New World music and all the ethnic clothing. It was a huge, it was a huge premises that we had. And then, um, and from then I started doing my Reiki. I, I, I sort of decided to start teaching. I think that was one of my first experiences there. And again, 
trying to make things not very simple. I put this crystal around on the floor and um, this gentleman was sitting there and it was my first, it was, I think he was one of the first gentlemen and, and, and he was sitting there on his own. I was just going to do the Reiki attunements, do the meditation. And as I was just doing the meditation, my throat just seized up. It's like, <laughs> oh, no. So he's, he's still sitting there with his eyes closed. I'm like running out of the room, coughing my guts up, <laughs> clearing my throat. Coming back in, and there was this crystal of amethyst bed on the floor, and I stumped my toe, and it's like, what am I doing? <laughs> anyway, I just carried on. He didn't even know I'd gone out the room, and and so of course again, keeping things simple, um, and that's that's what people need to be doing. And it's like, I look back now, and and this is one of my things. I'm going to write a book about all my 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 mis mishaps and my things that I've learned along the way. But I say that's why meditation, all those years ago, I was going to do a, a guided meditation and it was going to be on CD in those days. Um, but of course, it wasn't the right time. I probably wasn't confident enough with my voice. It's taken years to express my voice, which although I'm a very, like I say, yabby, 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 I can talk like talk like mad. Um, it's It's very more focused when I do my meditation. So it's taken a long while to get there. As I say to people, I believe that we need to get our roots firmly in the ground, very firmly in the ground as we grow slowly. Otherwise, there's so many people, I think, that try and do everything too soon. And if your roots aren't firmly in the ground, you'll you'll topple over. So yeah. that, that, again, is one of my my things that I try and say to people. There's no you don't need to grow really quickly. You don't need to grab everything that's going just do one thing at a time and just just work with that yeah makes 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 absolute sense if you've got a base that you can you you can work from and then move move from there and bring other things in once yeah. you once you've got once you've got that you know that ba base through you know my base route was angelic crakey and from there everything else has just come in and slotted into place as it does and That's evolves right. over time yeah yeah um, and, and it needs take time doesn't it I, I, I feel that it needs to take time yeah yeah I mean some things go you know do go really quickly but that's when you've got the synchronicities come in and that's when you yeah. know they've got to go quickly yeah and that when synchronicities come in then you know yep I've got to be doing this now it's when the synchronicities I don't come in it's like okay one step at a time yeah and again I think it's that thing of sometimes if people are a bit poorly it's because you're meant to be slowing down a little, a little bit, and and reevaluate your life a little bit. So sometimes, if I've sort of like, because I've I, I had, I don't like saying anything because I don't like labels, but a, a back problem. Sometimes if it played up, um, then I, I used to think I need a bit more time for myself again at the moment, and and that's why now I am sort of pacing myself so much more. Um, my life is so much more simpler now. Um, I yeah. think it's. I think it could get busier <laughs> again at the, <laughs> in a little while. Exactly, but I, but I, you I, can have busy and then quiet. Sorry, you can have busy and then quiet. Yeah, I, I've learned how I can say no more now, though, and I, I have learned to balance it and know that I can have my own time. Which before it never felt always right, sort of doing just what I wanted to do. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that's what a lot of um, people do struggle do struggle with is it's kind of like, I want to make this work. I want to be helping so many people. Um, you know, all these people need me. But you have to remember that you need to take care of yourself yeah. as well. And you need to say, no, those people will still be there when that's you're right. ready to come back if they're meant to work with you or you're yeah. meant to work with them. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so it's so never to so never be afraid to say to say no, no. Um, if if you if you need the time for yourself. So you're talking about um, all those years ago, you wanted to do guide meditations and put in CD, but it didn't come out. Do you do guide meditations now? I do. I've, I do. Well, I was doing a weekly um, meditation group. Um, I do that on a Thursday evening, uh, but it's now actually gone to fortnightly because now I'm doing them on YouTube as well. I'm like being able to get out to a bigger audience. So I haven't got many on YouTube at the moment, but I've also done the Violet Flame Decree. I've done a full moon release prayer. So I tend to do things that I feel that may be of use to people and just, again, keeping it quite sort of simple. 
Um, and so my, I've got another guided meditation ready to sort of do any time now. But of course, I think with school holidays, it's not, it's not been that easy to do. But again, I'll just go with the flow, just go with the flow. But yeah, so I do guided meditations on a Thursday evening. Um, and then I say now the YouTube channels and I, and I do my readings, but I, I also feel they're changing. And I don't know, I, I, I expect your feeling. The energies are so changing at the moment. There's, there's a massive shift coming for all of us I think <laughs> yeah a, a, to a, to a total shift I'm definitely going more multi-dimensional with my stuff yeah. um to totally more totally more dimensional um with it which is good you know which which is which is fun to play with and work with you know and be curious about how is this working how's that working yeah. um as 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 it as it goes as it goes along um, so we're talking about guided meditation. So as you know, I do guided meditations, and an oracle card readings. And each week I like to ask my guests what, whether they would like me to do a mini guided meditation or put an angel oracle card for themselves and those watching. So Sue, what would you like me to do? Um, if you wouldn't mind doing a, an oracle card, that would be lovely. Funny enough, I have them here. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Can't think how they managed to get there. <laughs> To be quite truthful, even if my guests say um, I'm a guide meditation, I normally do a card as well anyway. So, um, you know, that's just, that's just me. I love I love working with with cards. So um, when I do the cards, obviously I do the cards for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. So even though I work with the past, with past life regression, I take you back to the past to heal and learn from that so that you can be fully present in the here and now having healed. And even though I take you into the future with future life progression, it's only so you can get an understanding, so you can bring that back to be fully present. So everything I do is for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time, because being in the present is so, so important, um, especially as we now, are now going more multidimensional and there's more galactic um, stuff coming in um, for us. So the card that's come out is fellow travelers support is all around you mm. <laughs> isn't that a beautiful a beautiful perfect. card um perfect with what we've been talking about as these cards are um all, always do and it is and you know and it is saying you know more fellow travelers are joining are joining with you are meeting up with you and you're connecting with more and more people yeah. that are like-minded where you can speak your truth be who you truly want you who <clears throat> you truly want to be and that support is around you not just um angelically spiritually and galactically but in physical form in physical form as well so it's kind of like saying keep going on the journey you're doing mm. Um, because you have got fellow travellers who are walking that path with you at them at this moment in time towards that that rainbow um, at the end, um, you know. So that's not just for Sue; that is for everyone watching here as well. You know, there are people around you that will support you on your journey. You just have to be open to allowing them into your life, um, and when they come in that you know it's, it's 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 amazing what support is around you and the like-minded people that you do connect with yeah definitely and that's really apt, that card very apt yeah totally i, I had a soul reading this year and because i was selling i'm selling my, my therapy business um i was actually sort of told in my reading that i'm going to be traveling more and somebody else that's just had a soul reading, she was told that she'd be going to a couple of these places that I'm going to. And she's like, oh, I don't know whether that sounds good. I went, yeah, but it doesn't mean we can't go together. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, you, so, you're, so you're selling the business? I am, yes. 25 years I've had my business now, but I've decided that I'm selling it. <laughs> so, but I can still do lots from other places as well. So I'm not stopping working. I don't think I'll ever stop working. Um, but I feel that I've done my time in the, the business now. Um, a lot of people do say it's me, but I do feel that it, I hope I'd, I'd like to think somebody else that had a therapist, like wanted to do therapies, would, would carry it on. But whether that will happen or not, I don't know. But I feel that time for me to travel. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. With my fellow travellers. So, um, so, where, so, where are you planning on travelling to? Um, I haven't particularly got anywhere in my mind at the moment, but I think because of the shop, I've been so 
condition, not conditions, that's not the right word, but because I'm so used to being there and it's like, it's like if you go on holiday, you go away and you forget about everything, don't you? But if I've still got that premises, I will feel that I've still got such a strong connection. It will yes. stop me from possibly say, because I really would like to go and work with some elephants, say for sort of three weeks or something. And whereas if I've still got the premises, I'd be thinking I should really be doing meditation tonight yeah. or I really should be. And so I will, I will still have that probably mindset because that's me. I've been so like dedicated to what I've done. Whereas I think if I haven't got that that tie so much, and like I say, I can't. I, I am still going to do it. I'm. I'm not stopping working. There's places I can work from. Exactly, um, and, and I've always travel online. Exactly. Yeah. Although I'm not very good at that sort of thing. Oh, but, <laughs> you, but but you'll be getting better at it. I will. I will get better. Yeah. But I am quite a people person. But then I might travel to do sort of more, more different sort of things. But I am. I am pushing myself to do my um readings on online like on zoom and things so I'm, I'm, i am pushing myself in that respect but i okay. still like to be a people person and i still like the hands-on side of things really okay i don't suppose you got um uh cards with you at the moment or anything have you i've got some cards I, I, what what's what for well, i just wondered the thought you, um, i did a pulled a card for everyone watching why don't you do a card Right, can I just go and get one you then? You can go and get your cards, yes. Okay, it won't be a minute, two seconds, I'm going to put this down. <laughs> won't be a minute. That's fine. As you can see on this show, I do like to um, surprise my guests um, because I didn't actually mention this to Sue um, at the beginning. Um, just one of those things I like to, uh, to, to throw in. So for future guests, be prepared because you never know what I might ask you to do if you're willing to do it of course. Um, and don't forget, you know, any questions, please do put them in the comments um, and we will reply to them uh, for you. And if you want any help or guidance, you know, then, then again, put those in the comments and we will get back to you um, with, with that, uh, you know, because you never know, you might have some interesting questions or comments that you want to put in. I'm back. You're back. So I've got Angels of Light cards. Lovely. So they've not got all like the word, the the um, pictures, but they've got they've got a nice like description. So and they've got an affirmation as well, which I really like my affirmations. I try and do affirmations in a lot of my meditations actually. Oh, cool. So I'm just going to shuffle these. I'm just gonna, so this is for everybody today that's watching this. Okay. I usually try and get my card to drop out. <laughs> Right. Here we go. What's this one? Ha, flexibility. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. <laughs> oh, perfect, Sorry. perfect, perfect. Shall I read it? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh dear, it's funny, isn't it? We shouldn't we shouldn't be surprised really, Not we? really. <laughs> flexibility. Life is full of changes and surprises. Your guidance is to move with the current for it's resisting the flow which creates problems. Ask your angel to help you open your mind and heart to new ideas and fresh options. When you accept the possibility that there are other ways, previously unseen doorways will be open to you and you will move easily through change. There is a solution to every problem so look to all the things with eyes of love and expectation. Then life force will flow freely through you. You will feel healthy and alive and can access the necessary resources and wisdom within yourself to help you through change. And the affirmation is, I am free and flexible. Perfect. Absolutely perfect, <laughs> as always is. And thank you. Thank you, angels, universe. <laughs> etc we you know we just love all we love love all these synchronicities and, and perfection and that so um sue um have you got anything left any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers um one thing i would like to sort of 
say to people as well, if they haven't got into um, using the violet flame, with Saint Germain, who is an ascended master, he's also here to help us on our path. Um, and you don't need to have the violet flame attunement. You can use every everybody can use a violet flame. And I just just feel to get yourself in that energy of bringing a, a violet fire all the way around your body to transmute anything negative. And because so many people are hearing negative things or they get negative thoughts, I although we sort of say it's not religious, I religiously use Saint Germain every day and the Violet Flame Decree. And and just to help just to help you feeling as though there is um you, you can clear you can clear so much even like your thoughts and feelings by just surrounding yourself in that violet fire. Saint Germain is here and wants to support all of us and 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 I think start anyone that starts working with that energy will feel so much more freer and flexible. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, Saint Germain and the Violet Flame. Um, yeah, absolutely perfect. And Saint Germain um, is uh, one of the archangels um, with regards to angelic Reiki. And my front door actually um, is always surrounded by violet and black flame of transmutation. Uh, so but the yeah. black, the black, the black came in. Uh, um, uh, when all the negative um, stuff started happening a couple of years ago, it's sort of <laughs> like the black just came in with the violet. So my front door is surrounded by it. So anyone who comes into my house, I um, get, you know, it all gets transmuted. And in fact, I have seen people, clients that have come to my house that have kind of like gone to knock and then they've left because the flame, they, they're just not ready. No to 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 go through so again that's something you can you know you can put around you put around your doorways yeah you know helps with burglars it's funny though because when we when we had our first had our business the first premises we had that we rented was upstairs so every morning i'd have to go down put an a board out go upstairs and i'd be doing all the reiki symbols for protection it'd come to like 12 o'clock or one o'clock it's like no one's come in today overprotected it yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got you got to be careful. You don't yeah. lose it to ac excess. There's lots um, to learn. <laughs> there is. Violet flame's also good if you're on a journey. You've got traffic in front of you, and yeah. you've got a long journey. Yeah. You just ask the um, Saint Germain and the Violet Flame to clear your path for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and also have less, do less, and be more. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, very, very wise words, Sue, um, so very, very wise words. So I hope everyone you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful, as I know I definitely have. So, Sue, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Um, we've got a website. Um, I'm saying it's it's got some therapies on there as well, of the other therapists that rent the rooms at my premises. Um, the website is www.withcomplements, with an E, um, .co.uk. And my email address is su.pinckney. But you su.pinkney at gmail.com. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll put I'll, I'll put I'll put that in the, the comments yeah. as well. And are you on Instagram as well? I'm on Instagram as well, yeah. And I'm actually going to push myself to do TikTok for some of my meditation, like to do apparently I, I keep getting asked to sort of put some of my meditations on TikTok how it works I don't know yeah because because I'm kind of like a couple of you told me about putting my guide meditations on and it's like but how you know, know TikTok is kind of like yeah. don't aren't they just really short little bursts of things oh yeah how, exactly. how can you put a whole guide of meditation on there <laughs> If anyone's watching that that can help me and Sue with this, please put it in the <laughs> comments about how we can put a guide meditation on TikTok to, so so that we know what to do. It, it, even if it's just a small piece, though, and if someone likes it, that's probably then they can go on to your... Oh, to do the... Probably. God. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Anyone watching this that knows TikTok, <laughs> let us know. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So thank yeah. you so much, Sue, for sharing, so much. sharing your wisdom. It's been absolutely um, wonderful. Thank um, you and for thank your you for, patience. Oh, that's okay. And for taking the step to actually come and speak publicly um, with with what with what you do, you know, finding your finding your voice and allowing your voice to speak. Um, so thank you so much for uh, for stepping up and coming out and being on the show. Thank you very much. And I want to give everybody sort of thanks that supports me and. And that's helping me through 
everything that I'm doing that's coming in my life and, and everybody that watches this. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you to my viewers. And remember, you know, your comments, um, you know, really do help um, make this show, you know, with the interaction that we do. So again, thank you for that and for sharing it. And of course, if you are ready to remember your divine presence and step into your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free video call to discuss where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar and please feel free to join my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording where i take you into a future lifetime to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life as well as a couple of other free gifts and some discounts um, and again, thank you so much for watching and I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe. Every subscription helps. And I will put in the link around the, the YouTube, uh, Sue's YouTube channel, so you can subscribe on there as well. Thanks so that'll much. help. So that'll help both of us Thank and you. hit the bell button to be notified when this show goes live or I post new guides meditations or Sue posts new guide to meditations. Yeah. And I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.